is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome, welcome to DBL. Good morning to yeah. you guys. Good morning. Good morning. As I'm sure many of you have heard, it does appear that the Supreme Court is set to strike down Roe v. Wade, that landmark decision made nearly 50 years ago. It gave women across the country the constitutional right to get an abortion. Now, it all came to light due to a leaked opinion. I have the opinion right here, 98 pages, which has never happened before, ever. It was written by Justice Sa um, Samuel Alito, excuse me, and was obtained and published by Politico. Now, the court confirmed that this opinion is official, but not final. They've also opened an investigation into the leak. Already in my hometown last night of D.C., hundreds of protesters turned up at night at the Supreme Court on both sides of the issue. Many polls, including CBS News and Pew Research, show that a majority of Americans support keeping abortion legal in most cases. But DBL Nation, it's a hot topic, but we go there on this show. We want to know what you think. Should abortion be legal across the country? Yes or no. If you want a voice in this conversation, go to dblvote.com to weigh in. I've got to get your first reactions on this. Erica, your thoughts when you first heard. Um, I'm not surprised by this decision. Um, we have been talking for quite some time about the idea that anytime we are being shown to look right, there's always something going on in the left. Or shown look to look left, there's always something going on. Dangling on keys. The right. Yeah. right. Um, and the idea that this would be leaked in this way really also goes to show you how deeply rooted this issue is. Of course, I believe that Roe v. Wade should not have been overturned. I don't think anyone's going to be shocked by my opinion on that. Um, however, we have to look at all the layers that are involved in this. Um, Lindy West was on um, Daily Show oh, actually a while ago and talked about how a safe abortions will always be accessible to yes. the politicians, uh, their wives, their mistresses, their daughters. Um, th those will always be accessible. And why? It's about access and resource. So this is not only a war on women's bodies and autonomy and decisions to be able to make our own decisions on what we want to do. It's also war against class systems. Mm -hmm. It's the idea of keeping the poor poor, keep, keeping the under-resourced under resource and allowing only people who have full resources to have full autonomy over their bodies. I think that's a fair point that it's a very layered case. First of all, Al, what was your first reaction? And also, I wanted to get your reactions both on why and how and who do you think leaked this? These are two separate conversations. Both are historical in their own. Uh, we've never had a judicial opinion be leaked ever. And whoever did this is an FBI. Is There's an investigation into it because it might be a huge crime. So what did you think when you first heard as well. I mean, it's not surprising to me. I mean, we just saw that, you know, Clarence Thomas's wife was definitely, it's, it seems, was sending text messages about her opinions uh, as it pertained to the election. And that, I feel like, was the first time that, at least for the public, that there was a serious credibility crisis with the Supreme Court that up until then, especially when we were younger and we didn't realize that they were people and they were looked at more as deities, it was kind of the first time that they seemed human and capable of being fallible, of, you know, having opinions and leaning towards towards those biases. So right there, that was a crisis in credibility for me. And then when we look up and we see this, are you surprised, Tori? The, the discussion that was in my house last night is how hard are people gonna go on RBG? Because yeah. uh, my, my partner was not feeling what I had to say, but I feel like this is her fault. A lot of people I don't feel, feel like and in, RBG is just you know is Ruth Bader yes, Ginsburg and yes. she stayed on the court so long that Trump actually invet, got three justice picks. I just wanted to yes, get a little three background. super young, very conservative justice picks in that will be in the Supreme Court for the entirety of my daughter's reproductive lives and uh, reproductive life. And, you know, this is what happens when we look at people as, like I said, deities and we don't analyze what they're doing. The fact that she had cancer a number of times and did not step down left the Supreme Court vulnerable. And now I think this is just the first domino, Erica. You got a lot of time, Jack. We're going to see what else is going to fall. But just like George Carlin said, a right is not a right if it can be taken away. Mm. Beautifully said. I, I will say this, too. Uh, 
the main issue here, what you're referring to in that slippery slope that I've always been worried about is for 50 years, we've all decided in the Supreme Court that there is a right to privacy, right? There's a right to privacy to go to your doctor to discuss an abortion. There's a right to have a same sex marriage in the bedroom. The state stays out. Interracial marriages, we have a right to that. That's privacy, what I heard they're coming right? for next. Love so it. get this. Mm -hmm. Now, five justices, what this means to me is five justices fundamentally don't believe we all have a constitutional right to privacy anymore. So that means same-sex marriage, that means interracial marriage, anything that comes from that clause, right to privacy of due process, will be looked at. So it's an enormous slope that changes an enormous amount of things and it's so unprecedented. And really, take a moment, it's terrifying. Well, it's also it's very short-sighted. Yeah, it's extremely short-sighted. Um, what we're looking at is the demographics of our country are changing. In, in our lifetime, we're going to be majority brown. That means like all races intermix. There was a woman, I can't remember her name, but um, the, her clip went viral. It was a white woman talking about the idea that this is a wage against, or it's a war on white abortions because of the fact that the demographics of this country are changing. I think the idea that this is, um, it, it's being instituted in a way that is in preservation of what America was always and what it should always be is laughable. Mm. I think it's interesting that it's ha happening, of course, it's happening at the, you know, um, the, uh, basically it's a, way, a war against women, but it's also, it's very short-sighted as to what this actually could mean for the future demographics of this country. That's true, and just so you guys know, there's 13 trigger laws, so if this goes into effect, 13, Arkansas, Idaho, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, and Wyoming will all immediately be triggered that abortion will be illegal in their state, well, and, immediately. And that's, I think that's the more interesting conversation that I'd like to have, is obviously these things are going to happen, but then what comes next? What transpires? Because where we're headed for, Erica and Tori, is really two countries in one, especially when you start talking states' rights. We know where we know that phrase from. And when we start talking about states like Texas, Florida, Louisiana, states that are kind of live free, do whatever you want, drink beer, but don't smoke weed. You know, they have these kind of weird kind of outlaw laws, but they're still also very conservative. And what I feel like we're going to happen, especially if we go back to the state's rights, is we're going to have two Americas where people will decide where they live. Do you live in a, uh, you know, in a state where abortion is legal, marijuana is legal, gay marriage is legal? But there will be states, quite a few, at least a dozen or so, where right here. none of those things are legal, right. including gay marriage, maybe including interracial marriage. And we will just have to see how those states interact with the federal government, how they're able to uh, survive without federal funding. Will concerts, pro, uh, pro uh, sports, uh, at entertainment go through those states? Because that's another way that liberals fight back is they don't film movies there. Yeah, so it'll change. It'll the, be really interesting, and that will cause tension. Absolutely. In a country that has always been on the borderline of a powder keg, I wonder if that tension is going to spill over. Let me read some comments here. Um, some people see this as a monumentally wonderful decision. Absolutely. And we want to include those people in this conversation. Senator Josh Hawley says, if this is the opinion of the court, it will be one of the greatest opinions in Supreme Court history. It will save millions of lives. Edward on Twitter <laughs> says only one small step. The unborn have a right to life that needs protection by the Constitution. Michelle says differently. This makes me so angry. We're going backwards. And David says so only women with money will have access to safe abortions. Of course, there's a and you can say what you want, but Trump delivered on his promises. Well, what what millions of lives? So once they get here, is he volunteering to take care of them? Because I can tell you that there are over 55 percent of children in this country who are displaced and removed from their homes and no one is volunteering mm -hmm. to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Are those resources coming out of his pocket? Is he going to give advocacy to those children who don't have adequate, adequate resources, don't have anyone to turn to? It's funny how everybody's so excited about what's happening in somebody else's womb, but once that child gets here, they don't that care. beautiful, innocent child, nobody cares. I feel you. Let's look at the poll. 85% of you say yes, abortion should be legal across the country. 15% of you say no.
coming up on DBL. The search is on for a corrections officer who's accused of helping a murder escape, a suspect escape, is a romance behind their disappearance. And from Kim Kardashian's iconic Marilyn Monroe dress to Blake Lively's optical illusion gown, we're talking about the most extravagant looks from last night's Met Gala. Closed captioning provided by Daily Blast Live is always focused, always on cue, always ready, always timely. This May, don't miss a day. DBL is all new every day. Erica, okay. Uh, you, uh, you, you obviously spoke with passion, Tori. Obviously, this is you. You and I and my girl were texting last night about this. I wanted to know if we move away from just this topic, which seemed impossible. Did okay. Do you feel like looking back at Trump's presidency that he did deliver on his promises? Because he did say he was going to get... I don't even, like, here, see, I'm like, what? to be quite honest, I'm not even comfortable having that conversation yeah. because I'm very much like, let's look forward. And yes, obviously, everything was put in place. Amy Com uh, uh, Barrett mm -hmm. was run through for a reason. Like, she was confirmed expeditiously But that's for my reason. question. Why did it take... Why, did, why didn't they... Why couldn't they do the same thing with Merrick? Garland. That's that, and I think that is the fun. Of, you're you putting your hands up there, and, and Tori, please, you. This is your area. The fact that that Democrats couldn't get Merrick Garland through, but uh, Amy Co Coney Bear was put through faster than like a, a, a season. Uh, 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 you know, on YouTube. Yeah. Like, how did, how, did, how is that possible where the Republicans were able to get her through so quickly? There's a famous saying that Democrats don't politic well. The GOP and the Republicans are play, play dirty, and that's they play well. But maybe they're just playing the game the right they way. They do. They mudsling correctly, and they get stuff accomplished. Now, that doesn't mean to say on the left there aren't people that do it fast. The gay rights movement was within two generations. But that was a overturned. social movement, and there's a lot of Agreed. Uh, uh, but Republicans Democrats, that have gay children. Get, Democrats do not tend to fight well. They don't tend to message well. well they don't brand problem. well. They don't politic well. <laughs> and it's a major issue that we've seen because Republicans tend to get what they want that way. It, because it's run more like a corporation. Yeah. You know, like Welcome back. Have you heard about this one? There's a search underway for an Alabama corrections officer named Vicki White. She is accused, she's on the left there, of course, of helping a murder suspect escape from jail. Now, interestingly enough, his name is Casey White. The two are not related. An arrest warrant has now been issued for Vicki. Vicki's family and friends are reportedly trying to make sense of how she got involved when she's on the brink of retirement and has a totally clean record. Some are speculating the two are romantically linked. Mm, that was, I didn't know if we were, the, 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 I don't know where that noise came from. That was amazing. <laughs> but it is interesting, Erica, and it shows you all the time. I was, it's funny, I was telling my, uh, my daughter this last weekend, y you can live a good, clean life and really blow it right at the end. And it appears <laughs> that's what she did. She Ms. just White like did. stopped running the race when she saw the finish line and just started walking into the crowd. Just celebrating. I don't know what she's doing, but this is going to be a huge L for her. She is going to go to jail for the rest of her life and she will be in jail with people that she probably was <laughs> like overseeing. This is amazing. I don't know where to go from should this. Should there Erica. be a movie and who should play well, Ms. Yeah, But Vicky the movie White. has to end great. It's just gonna this. end with them in an this army's getting arrested. This is not the first time that that someone in the correctional facility has run away and aided and abetted someone getting out of prison. This isn't the first time. And I also, I'm always like, for a lot of people are there for reasons that are not nefarious, but there are a lot of people put, place themselves in situations because of situations like this. Like you it, clearly, I'm just gonna speculate. I'm gonna speculate and maybe I'm wrong, but Vicky was trying to get her groove back. And she <laughs> had, I think she was she currently getting it back. Vicky, Vicky. Very, Vicky. Uh, you know, a very uh, steady population 
of people to choose from. Consistent. And it was just, right, exactly. Consistency. Yeah, I mean, mm. there you go. They're always there. Now, let me tell you something about this man. Guess how tall this man was to get him out of jail. This man was six feet, nine inches. Oh, my goodness. Tall. How does one <laughs> get out? there I don't I don't maybe there was like a celebrity <laughs> basketball tournament and he left with them but this is like such a weird <laughs> story the case of the whites I don't yeah I don't, I don't understand it but it does make sense we do see this a lot first of all obviously inmates are in, uh, unfortunately like serial killers they they have their pick of women people were notoriously loved a night stalker Charles Manson mm -hmm. it's just a thing there is that kind of bad boy element and I think Erica and Tori you kind of kind of hit it on the head it is consistency it's you you have a chance to talk to this person on a daily basis they're in a confined space and they're showing you attention she is a human being like anybody else and when somebody's consistently saying i'm listening to you erica hey tori i got what you're saying hey how did right. that turn out you develop a relationship and the walls that we see as outsiders to them isn't that big of a deal and he, the idea of starting a life with a six foot nine <laughs> man murder probably suspect. seemed pretty good to do, her. do you think yeah go ahead I see it from the other side. It's her responsibility. Obviously, we know it's her responsibility to do to do better. <laughs> to not help yeah. break out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, this is somebody who doesn't have their normal, you know, civil constitutional rights. So, I mean, not. I guess I shouldn't say it like that. But I, I look at it from the perspective of him. I guess not her. Yeah, it's fair. It, and it, I, the harder thing to remember, Tori, I'm just going to say this, is this is a woman that made a decision. Right. And maybe this looked like a better life than just retirement for her. And it's hard to understand, but I think that's what it is. Well, when they catch her, will she will she wave the white flag? Oh, that was good. That was a good. Thanks. Last name punt. Thanks. Coming up on DBL, <laughs> we've got some of the hits and some of the misses from last night's Met Gala. Who was your favorite? The former fiance of reality TV star Rob Kardashian is suing the Kardashian family for more than $140 million, claiming they ruined her career and caused lost wages. During the ongoing court case, Black China admitted to not paying taxes since 2015. The model, who said she made $2 million just last year, says she doesn't even have a bank account. People on social media are wondering if China admitted to not paying taxes because she doesn't have a bank account. Now, while we can't speak to her motives for not paying taxes, we can look into this question. If you don't have a bank account, are you exempt from paying taxes? Let's verify. Our sources are the Internal Revenue Service, Mark Stieber, Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt, and the FDIC. According to the IRS, quote, federal income tax is based on the income you receive, no matter how you receive it, unquote. The agency says people are expected to pay taxes on their income, quote, regardless of what accounts they may or may not have, unquote. There are a few exceptions for people who don't meet the minimum age or income requirements and those who claim certain filing statuses. All employers must file a W-2 form for workers making more than $600, so the IRS will expect to receive a tax return that matches those W-2s. The agency says not having a bank account does not preclude you from paying taxes. According to the FDIC, there are reportedly 7 million Americans who don't have a bank account. Mark Stieber, Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt, says most of those unbanked people still file their taxes annually. Stieber added, quote, just because someone doesn't have a bank account doesn't mean they get away with not filing their federal or state income taxes or paying taxes they may owe on earnings they have, unquote. So we can verify that yes, even if you don't have a bank account, you still have to pay your taxes. With your Verify, I'm Ariane Daytil. Welcome back. Let's talk about what's really important. The Met Gala it returned to its usual spot on the first Monday in May, and the stars came out in full force to walk the red carpet in style. Ooh, yeah, yeah, Euro discotheque. For the first time in Met Gala history, all of the Kardashian and Jenner sisters were invited, but reviews of their style were mixed. Some loved Chloe and Kendall's gowns, but others took issue with Kylie's backwards baseball cap and Courtney's frumpy frock. Kim showed up with Pete, had bleach blonde hair, wearing Marilyn Monroe's iconic gold dress, the same one she wore when she sang happy birthday to Mr. President Kennedy. Kim reportedly lost 16 pounds in three weeks 
to fit into the dress. There were some other hits and misses at the Met. Megan the Stallion really embraced the gilded glamour theme with this gold dress that made her look like a Greek goddess. I love that. Fellow rapper Cardi B also looked stunning in gold. Lizzo's dress took 22,000 hours to make and she paired it with a $55,000 flute. <laughs> How much do flutes normally cost? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a flautist. Amy Schumer's dress was a bit of a to miss in this black coat, dress, and sunglasses. Katy Perry usually goes all out, but this time she went for a traditional black Oscar de la Renta gown. And Billie Eilish divided critics with her corseted gown. But everyone's talking about Blake Lively's optical illusion dress that started out in this copper color, but when these men released the bow, the skirt transformed. It was double-sided into a teal green. Blake said it was a tribute to New York architecture and the Statue of Liberty. Wow. Even Blake's husband, Ryan Reynolds, could not take his eyes off his wife and even gave her a little applause. Why did he even bother getting dressed? <laughs> <laughs> When your wife has on that dress, she's like, I'm throwing the sweats on. Oh, my you God, know. it was amazing. Did you see how the men, they all came around her and started undoing her bow and were like, what is she doing? And it unfurled into this sort of patina, that statuesque green of the Statue of Liberty. It was amazing. Yeah, there were a lot of tributes. Um, obviously, Kim Kardashian, uh, reg wow. Right? Wow. Right? With the tribute to Marilyn Monroe. But Gabrielle Union with the tribute to Diane Carroll, but we didn't talk about the actual gilded goddess who was the star of the show, and she wasn't even there. Who? Rihanna. Rihanna was carved out in a actual uh, statue. Yes. She was displayed for all to see. How do you win the Met and you ain't even there? Because <laughs> how is that possible? Because you're Rihanna. That's oh right. my gosh. Now, I mean, unbelievable. She was crazy good. Now there was this crazy mix up. A lot of people thought this fellow right here, I think we have a picture, right? Was Jared Leto. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, look at him. What's he doing? That's actually a man named, I believe, Frederick Robertson. It is not Jared Leto. Jared Leto came looking like a twin to the head of the Gucci uh, fashion house. I thought that was kind of cool. Which was cool. So. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Is it weird that I liked Pete's classic style? I, I did like, he, he's been wearing a lot of oversized clothes lately, and I get that. My daughter dresses like that. But I do like, he kind of went back to the old school. It's like almost a, a, an intentionally almost. skinny tie, which I like. I don't know how many people could, could pull that off, but I liked, I like I really liked his old school kind of classic suit there. I do too. I have to be honest, Chloe Kardashian, Chloe, not Chloe, excuse me, Kylie Jenner, what the heck was that? Well, I know it's for Virgil <laughs> Abloh, right? A, a, right. A tribute to a someone who passed away who was a um, oh, designer. Icon. Yeah, huge icon. icon. So uh, if you didn't know that, it was a little white. confusing. Yeah. Yeah. She just, somebody else needed to do the tribute. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It just kind of, it, 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 it just kind of ate her up yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I also wonder if they have like a family meeting, like, okay, this today, Kim's gonna be the star, so everybody else just blend in. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, because Courtney looked very weird too. I didn't yeah. love the Courtney. Let us know what you guys think. Dishing on the dashes. <laughs> like we'll be right back. <laughs> Was that good? Promotional consideration is brought to you by. The ghost. Mm. Oh no. Ali Popol works three full-time jobs. Excuse the mess as always. At an IT company as a realtor Whoa. and as a dad. This is my son, Aaron. He is uh, now 11 months. But to do anything, he first needs to make sure that his glucose is in check. I'm type 1 diabetic. I'm insulin dependent, so my pancreas does not produce any insulin. Without it, he could go into what's called diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, which could lead to a coma. So this is life-saving. It's food, water, insulin for I you. need it like oxygen, yes. And right now, Ali is paying under 50 bucks to get five vials of insulin. But back when he was unemployed and uninsured, he says he would pay anywhere from $400 to $800 per month, which is why he wants to know. Why does it cost so much? So let's verify. What explains the cost of insulin? 
For answers, we spoke with Gerard Anderson, a professor at Johns Hopkins University. It's a very, very complicated supply chain. And Dr. Robert Lash, the chief medical officer at the Endocrine Society. Our team also read this 269-page report from the U.S. House Oversight and Reform Committee and watched a 2019 congressional hearing on this exact subject. And according to our two experts, $10 to $25 is a fair estimate of the cost to create insulin. Although Dr. Lash referenced this study, which says that a vial of insulin could cost less than $8 to make. As for the price tag, well, that's complicated. It doesn't make any sense. You're trying to make sense out of something that makes no sense. Anderson explains there's limited competition. In fact, according to that House committee report, just three drug companies make up 90% of the global market. And here are their list prices. About $275 for Humalog, made by Eli Lilly. About $284 for Lantis, made by Sanofi. And almost $290 for Novolog, made by Novo Nordisk. But these list prices set by the manufacturer are just the first piece of the puzzle. Insurance companies will then negotiate a lower price through Pharmaceutical Benefit Managers, or PBMs. Our experts say they decide which drugs get a favorable placement on what's called a formulary, which is essentially the list of drugs your insurance will cover. So making these PBMs happy with big rebates is a huge deal for the pharmaceutical companies. There's been this dance where the rebate goes up, the price goes up, the rebate goes up, the price goes up. And if you have good insurance, this dance may not impact you much. You only see that reduced price, but it's a different story for those with a high deductible. Until they've incurred three, five, ten thousand dollars they're going to have to pay the list price unless their insurance somehow has negotiated something for them, but that's not common. As for those with no insurance at all, our experts say that they're often going to have to really pay up. If you don't have insurance at all, you're going to be paying list price. And Medicare patients who don't have Part D, the prescription drug plan, could be in the same boat. Now, our team did reach out to the three pharmaceutical companies and listen to their 2019 testimony. List part price is only part of the story. They essentially argue that the list price is a red herring because it doesn't factor in the big rebates, adding that there are also discounts available for those with and without insurance. Although you have to apply for these discounts and it's up to the pharmaceutical company if you're gonna be approved. So we can verify that for the uninsured or people with a high deductible, the answer is yes. They would have to pay hundreds of dollars unless they get a discount. Welcome back. If you or anyone you know is suffering from long haul COVID symptoms, you actually might want to consider low impact exercise. That's today's focus on fitness presented by QB. So at least one in 10 COVID patients suffer from lingering symptoms. I know two people. I know a lot of people months past testing positive, but here's the good news. There is a new study out that suggests that light workouts can actually reduce long haul COVID symptoms that include extreme fatigue, shortness of breath, and that brain fog that a lot of people have been talking about. QB is such a great way to get some quick exercise regardless of physical ability or age. Try their under desk elliptical at home. Call 1-800-556-2089 or visit QB.com to learn more. It's I really, really, I really appreciate them doing this me too. because no one talks about people with long COVID. Everybody's like, oh, it's over. Let's go mm -hmm. to the beach. But some people are like, I can't walk up my stairs. Mm -hmm. So I really like the idea that we're reaching back and not forgetting this, this it's debilitating and like really helping those people. So and Good on QB. I agree. GBL's new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. Bye, guys.